They do not know, for instance, that somebody who you know, lives in Bethlehem and works in Nazareth has to be humiliated for six hours a day, between four and six hours a day, um, two hours or three hours going to work, passing through the Israeli checkpoint, and another two, three hours coming back. Um, I, 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 you know, it's or, or that if you're indigenous Palestinian, if you're not Jewish Israeli, you cannot own land on 93% of the land controlled by Israel. Forget the occupied territories. We're talking about present day Israel, pre-67. If you're not a Jewish Israeli citizen, you don't have the right to own land on 93%. You're treated as a second class citizen and you're the indigenous population. Uh, uh, so, so this is the part of reality. Uh, if you listen to the Western mainstream media, uh, Palestinians attacked and Israel retaliated. Israel is always retaliating. It's never initiating. So let's set the record straight. Uh, Paulo Freire, uh, the Brazilian uh, educator, philosopher, once said that with the initiation of oppression, violence has already begun. So violence yeah. is what the oppressor creates. Everything beyond that is a reaction to the initial violence of the oppression. Uh, uh, the oppressed, he said, Paulo Freire said, the oppressed never initiate violence. They are the product of the oppressor's violence. So that's why our position is, as a nonviolent movement that wants to end all violence, we absolutely need to address the root causes. So Palestinians in Gaza, if it were for the devastation only, yes, they would feel totally despondent, totally hopeless, uh, uh, under siege for 14 years, as you said, Israel at one point counted the per capita calories going into Gaza. I mean, imagine per capita calories. And one senior Israeli official uh, uh, said, vice class, said he was one of the top advisors to Sharon, Prime Minister Sharon. He said, we want to put the Palestinians on a diet to bring them to the verge of death, but we don't want them to die. It doesn't look good. Uh, of course, to him, it doesn't look good on CNN and BBC. Uh, but it's bringing them to the verge. That's the criminality. That's the intentional criminality of the Israeli regime of oppression. If it were just to that, yes, if I were living in Gaza, one of the two million Palestinians, mostly refugees, expelled in 1948 from their homes and, and, and farms and lands, I would feel totally hopeless. But Palestinians also feel that we are resisting as a whole people, not just Palestinians in historic Palestine, also Palestinians in exile. And this time around, around the world, solidarity is much, much higher. We can go into more details, but to me, as someone who has been following that work and working a lot on the international solidarity with our pe uh, people's struggle for liberation, it is unprecedented. I underline unprecedented. We've never seen the level of solidarity that we're seeing today uh, in the top echelons of, of uh, influence, uh, from Hollywood to the music industry, to the uh, sports, to academia, to culture. I mean, everywhere we're seeing enormous uh, support, trade union support, uh, workers, farmers, unions in India, uh, South Africa, port workers. It's just an amazing uh, uh, level of solidarity, effective, meaningful solidarity beyond the huge marches on the street, which are important, but insufficient. So we're seeing effective solidarity. Finally, the world is seeing Israel for what it is, an apartheid state. It's not just Beth Salem, Israel's biggest human rights organization, saying it's an apartheid state. It's not just Human Rights Watch. It's not just so many Palestinians for decades saying it's an apartheid state. Now the whole world is recognizing in the US Congress, the belly of the beast, congressmen and women are coming out and saying Israel is an apartheid state. This is totally new. This is unprecedented in the history of solidarity with Palestine. People in Gaza, little children that you see on TV, come out and say, thank you, ex, uh, you know, their, their, their favorite football player in, in Manchester United, or thank you, ex-artist, musician, or because they know them by name, and, and suddenly they see them holding a sign, Free Palestine, or tweeting Free Palestine, and they feel, you know what, we're, we're winning this. Yes, it can happen in our lifetime, and we are gathering grassroots power to make it happen. And this does not need to be bloody or, or kick anyone out. This means ethical coexistence with justice. Ethical coexistence is exactly the project of my life, the intellectual project of my life that I'm doing a PhD on, ethical decolonization. That's exactly what I'm doing. So no one throws anyone out. It's dismantling the structures, the power structures 
of apartheid and, and settler colonialism so that Palestinians can have justice and average uh, Jewish Israeli can have a normal life, not as an oppressor and not as oppressed either, as a normal citizen of a joint common state with equal rights for everyone, including the refugees.